Hello, and welcome to Alive with Amanda. Today, we're going to be talking about how to finance your group practice. So maybe you're thinking about starting a group practice. You're maybe just starting out as a solo practitioner and you're wondering how to make that jump right away. Or maybe you have a solo practice and now you're ready to expand. And either way, congratulations. What an exciting time in your private practice journey. And you're wondering, how am I going to pay for this? You're seeing uh, some of the things that you're going to need to invest in and you're wondering how to do it. So there's a couple of options for you. The most common option, the option that we did was we used the profits from my solo practice in order to open up the group practice and we did it slowly. So what that looks like is that we always moved into a little bit of, I don't want to say less office than we need, but we were very conservative with the amount of office space that we needed. Aside from payroll, your rent is usually going to be the most expensive thing. And so be mindful of that. Go into a space that works for you and your group practice, but don't pay too much money for it and don't get a larger space than you think that you need. You can always move. I have moved my space a few times, especially in our Wellington location because we needed to grow, but I was conservative to begin with because I wanted to know the market. I wanted to know the clinicians. I wanted to get to know the business, right? And so always make sure that you're not overpaying for your office. I have gone to beautiful offices, spaces that I was like, wow, I could really see myself here. We actually just looked at a space recently and it was fantastic. It was large and there was play spaces and there was space for admin and kitchen and large offices and almost every single office had a window. And it was great, but the price tag was more than what we want to pay per office. And we have that metric and we know that we are not going to pay more than that, even if we, you know, are wowed by all the shiny things in the office. So be mindful of how you pay for your office space. And usually you have to have first, last and security saved up. And then if you are doing W-2 employees, a lot of people want to have money saved up to be able to pay those employees right away. And so that's where people start thinking about taking out loans to start off their group practice. There are SBA loans and other loans available to small businesses, but usually they want to see some kind of income coming in, a business plan. And so you have to make sure you have a business plan. You have to make sure that your solo practice is profitable and that maybe you do already have some money set aside for these things. Starting with a loan is not a bad option, especially if you're planning on building out a solid group practice. Maybe you've done some group practice coaching. You know the things that you need to do. You have people waiting for you. Because the thing about a loan is you have to pay it back. It's not like money that you have saved up and then now you have, you know, it's just profit. No, you have to pay your loan back. So now you have to pay your people, you have to pay your rent, and you have to pay your loan back. So you want to make sure that you're not getting in over your head when you're taking out a loan. If you want to take out a loan, take out a loan for operating expenses for six months. Don't take out more than you need. You can always pay it back right away. Yes. So that is something if you find that you don't need the loan amount of money that you've taken, pay it back. So then that way, you can make sure that you're not in over your head. That's one thing about businesses in general. And that's why you see those numbers like, you know, X amount of businesses fail in the first five years because people take out loans and they have different obligations around their business and they're not able to make those obligations. Not that they're not profitable in the sense that they're bringing in money, they're paying their people, but that they've gone in over their head with rent, with loans and with other things. And so where we're at in our economy right now, I would definitely recommend to people to be conservative with how you're going into your group practice. Make sure that you have ran the numbers, you've contacted other clinicians that want to work with you. You've accounted for things like taxes. So then that way you can make some smart decisions about how much it's really going to cost you to run your practice. I'm going to give you a couple other tips on where to find money. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Therapy Notes. If you're looking for an electronic health record that can really help you run a solid group practice, I want you to check out Therapy Notes. They have wonderful reports. You can sort by clinician. You can sort by location. You can sort by 
insurance, you can really get a lot of information from their reporting function. You can bill insurance. They have a free telehealth option. So therapy notes to me is the best electronic health record out there for a group practice, especially when you can pick up the phone, you can call, you can get some really great customer for service from them. So thank you to our sponsor, Therapy Notes. So going back to, there are other options. There are grants out there. There are things that you can offer in your community that maybe is grant supported. So if you are, maybe you've worked at a nonprofit or maybe you've worked somewhere where they have gotten grants and you know that, I haven't gone the grant route because I'm not that familiar with it, right? And I'm not really that comfortable with it. So for me, grants isn't the way to go. But for you, maybe you know something about grants. Maybe you know a grant writer or you can find a grant writer. And if you want to, you know, offer something really particular for your group practice, it's a great way to go. So funding your group practice can be an exciting time too, because you get to figure out where you want to go and how you want to do it. So I wish you the best of luck in building your smart group practice. I'll see you soon, everybody. Bye.